And you've said the, the, the defense doesn't have to be great. We've seen flashes of this defensive line. How good do you think the defensive line is going to be? The question comes down to how good can Miles Garrett be, right? Because if Miles Garrett hits that second another level, right, and becomes all world and gets like 20 sacks or something, and it's crazy, like that's what he has to do to break out is get 20 sacks. Um, and that's almost the record for a single season. But if he gets to that level, right, where he's having incredible numbers, then this defense is going to be monstrous because Miles is playing super well. Team's going to be getting rid of the ball quick. That simplifies the job for the secondary, and the secondary is actually really talented. So you give talented players an easier job. I mean, you can already see where we're going with this, and then you have good players around him this defense can be great the question is what are what, did they unlearn enough from last year <laughs> to be able to reach that potential that's the question but the roster's there yeah th I'm I want to see I, I'm curious to see especially um, that first defensive line unit against the Chiefs because against the the commanders, uh, when we saw them in flashes, you started to see a little bit. They were getting in the backfield and, and making it uncomfortable. Are, are they going to do that with a Pat Mahomes or a mobile quarterback? I'm just curious to see that. One of the things I'm curious, too, with this defense is since they are going to attack so much, since they're not going to really contain on both sides and they're going to prioritize being aggressive, how does that work with the more scrambly type quarterbacks, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily talking about Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson. Those are like direct run quarterbacks. But like a Pat Mahomes is a good example of like, hey, if you don't contain on Pat, Pat can be slippery, get something out to the side or or kind of scramble for some yards. So that's going to be something that's going to be interesting to see during this preseason game is, hey, what does it when you have a guy who's not necessarily a runner, but a little mobile back there and you pressure him that much? What happens if the first man that, that gets that pressure doesn't get there? Are we able to be good enough on that back end to not make that um, be something that bites us in the butt time and time again during the season? Yeah, the, the, um, with what I know of Jim Schwartz, he's going to – this is what we do, this is our defense, and he'll keep tweaking matchups until he finds what works for him. Yeah, yeah, he's going to keep tweaking and keep uh, trying to find these matchups for them, uh, especially in the secondary. But he does have a pretty strident philosophy of like, hey, I'm willing to take these lumps if this means I can be more aggressive, right? And that's the thing. It's a different philosophy. Each philosophy has its strengths and weaknesses. People didn't like with the last defense that the corners would play off more than they would play, you know, kind of man-to-man -man coverage. Now you're going to get more man-to-man -man coverage, but with man-to-man -man coverage comes some consequences, right? It's easier to scramble on man-to-man -man coverage. Sometimes it's easier to beat man-to-man -man coverage. You get kind of beat a lot in the in the red zone in man-to-man -man coverage. So, like, how do you handle these kind of things? That's going to be the job for Jim Schwartz, right? Because the talent is there, but they just need to be put in the right pieces, places, and we'll see if that happens this upcoming season.